Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. We have got Dr. Skegan again. <laughs> we love her here. And today she's going to talk with us about gagging. Yes, <laughs> gagging is an issue for a lot of you, but we've got you covered. She has just sat here and explained all of that to me. So now we are going to explain it to you guys. And this video is sponsored by ASAP Dental Care. They have eight locations in Northeast Florida and they provide same day smiles seven days a week. Don't forget to check out their information in the description box below. You can call and set up a free consultation so that you can see you know, what you have to do to get on the road to having a beautiful smile. Gagging. Yes. How often do you see it? Every day. Yes. yes. <laughs> so it's a common thing with denture patients. Yes, it is a common problem. And there's degrees of, of gagging too. Um, you know, there's sometimes we're taking impressions on patients and there's a very valid reason for why that may make somebody gag. But yeah. then we also have more extreme cases where there really isn't a lot of tolerance and the slightest thing may cause somebody to gag. And that can be really challenging, especially when it comes to wearing dentures. Right. So that's something that I see a lot is especially Especially with a new denture patient, they get their dentures, their immediate dentures, and you know that first couple of weeks is awkward for anybody. You know, it was awkward for me. But then after you've moved beyond that two weeks, they're like, I just can't wear these dentures. I, I can't wear them. I gag every time I put them in, every time I take them out, and they just resolve to the fact that they're never going to be able to function with dentures. Um, what are some kind of like common reasons that a patient might? gag with dentures and is there hope for them? Yes, there is hope. And I think that you need to understand what's causing the gagging. And there can be physiological or anatomical reasons for gagging. And then there can also be psychological reasons for gagging and understanding which of these is causing the issue is really important to getting things better. What is the easiest thing to rule out? So one of the most common things that would be the easiest to fix is if the denture is actually overextended. And if the denture touches the soft palate, that's when you can have a gagging sensation really triggered because ideally the back of the denture should go just to the end of the hard palate. And if there aren't other physiological or psychological issues, that would not cause gagging. So if a patient is having gagging with their denture, one of the first things that I would do is to look at is the back of that denture overextended and is it too thick? Because if the denture is too thick in the back, that can also trigger gagging. Okay, so then let's just say that you um, you went to your dentist and they're checking out the denture to make sure nothing's wrong with that. If there is, is there anything that they can do to make an, an adjustment to that or do they have to just start from scratch and make a new denture? In the vast majority of cases, it should be able to be adjusted um, it, it, while you're there because it's just a matter of shortening the denture. It's much more difficult to add than it is to take away. So taking away from the back of that denture can, can help. And it can also be thinned so that there isn't so much thickness in the back of the mouth. It's very easy to do in the office. Okay. And you know, does it, it doesn't necessarily mean that the denture was made wrong because the impression process can sometimes be like very tedious from what I understand. When you're making an immediate denture, you're always kind of guessing how someone's going to heal. And the denture is made based on assumptions of how a person's going to heal. And that may change or be a little bit different than what you expected. Having really accurate impressions to begin with is important, but that can be challenging if someone has a gag reflex also. Right. One of the things that I hear a lot is that dentists oftentimes will have to work with averages because when, when they're taking measurements, there's a lot of different things that could be going on. Maybe you are gagging in the chair while you're getting your <laughs> impressions. Um, maybe um, you moved the wrong way. What are some things that the patient might be able to do to make sure that from the first step of impressions that they're getting the best measurements possible to make a good fitting denture? Well, I think it's a collaboration between the, the patient and the dentist. And certainly if you know that you have a tendency to gag, you want to let your, your office know like, hey, I'm, I tend to gag. And there are things we can do to help through the impression process to make that easier. On the simple end, you want to make sure when an impression is being taken, especially it's the upper arch that's more of an issue, you want to tilt your head down towards your chest because it helps to open up the nasopharynx so you don't 
have that sensation that you can't breathe while you have something in your mouth. That's important. Sometimes lifting your foot, just getting your focus of attention away from your mouth can be helpful, but there are also other things that we can do with Sometimes sprinkling a little bit of salt on the tongue can decrease the tendency to gag. We also have cetacane, that's an anesthetic spray that we can put towards the back of the mouth. That can decrease the sensation of gagging. And then also just you know, technique wise, when we are putting this tray of goo in your mouth, putting it from the back and squishing it forward so that it's going forwards and forwards and not backwards. Right. It's really, really <laughs> helpful for the patient. So I think just communicating with your dentist and the assistant is really important for that. Okay, so then let's assume that they went to the dentist yes. and their denture is fine. What is the next step? So if someone's still having issues, there can be other physiological things at play that could be causing um, gagging. Sometimes um, just a person's individual anatomy, if they tend to be someone who snores that has sleep apnea, or if they have acid reflux and some GI issues, those can all contribute to, to gagging. And it may be helpful to have a consultation with your primary care physician um, if there's a deviated septum, there may be things that can be done with the rest of the structures from the nose to the stomach to help decrease the sensation of gagging if that's the contributing cause. Right, okay, and I guess it depends on you know how severe that is. Let's, uh, let's just say that a patient has sleep apnea. It doesn't mean that everybody with sleep apnea is going to have issues, but maybe this person does. And I think that that plays into kind of like the psychology of being a denture wearer and making that transition and getting used to it. Absolutely. Because, you know, my mom, I, I oftentimes mention that my mom had, you know, a lot of problems with her dentures. And I remembered every time she popped them out, she would gag. Mm -hmm. Every time she put them back in her mouth, she would gag. I think my mom, like a lot of patients, they run into that first roadblock and they don't realize that there are things that they can do to push beyond that. What are some things, if it is, if you've ruled out the denture and there's nothing wrong with the denture and you've seen your doctor and, you know, they can't find anything going on physiologically, anatomically with your mouth or your throat, then we have to assume that it could possibly be, you know, a mental block that they have. And there's nothing wrong with that because we all have mental blocks. But th does that mean that there's no hope for them or is, are the things that they can do to make them, to help them move beyond that? that mental block that they have. Yes, and I, that psychological component is probably the most challenging, but I certainly think that there's hope for patients that there is a strong psychological component. First of all, recognizing that you can change it by changing your thinking is, is really important. So if you're determined that you're going to get be able to wear your denture, working on desensitizing that gag reflex is very helpful, and there are a lot of great articles on the internet about how to desensitize. But basically you want to, it may be taking a toothbrush or the back of a spoon, but increasing your tolerance to having something touch the soft palate. And at first you may be like one millimeter onto your soft palate. And I think what people need to do is realize I can have something touching here and I can still breathe through my nose and really focusing on the breathing part of the process helps them to, first of all, feel calmer and also realize that, okay, I can have something touching here and I'm, I'm not going to gag. And you start to rebuild neural pathways that are different so you're not reflexively gagging. Right. And, you know, that makes a lot of sense because when I was younger, like the first half of my life, I was terrified of getting sick. Mm -hmm. I was terrified that, you know, I might vomit. I, mm -hmm. It was an actual phobia. Like I would do everything in my power to avoid that because mm -hmm. I just did not not like that sensation of gagging. It feels mm -hmm. like you're choking. It's yeah. just like crazy yes. making. But then I ended up having four babies <laughs> and I was pregnant four times and I had a lot of morning sickness with each of those pregnancies. And I guess like I inadvertently desensitized myself to mm -hmm. my gag reflex. What used to give me so much trauma, such a trauma response, it's nothing to me now. Mm -hmm. And I, like if I'm brushing my teeth and I accidentally hit the back of my, you know, that soft palate, yeah. it doesn't really do anything for me now. So mm -hmm. I do believe that, you know, with a lot of people through through that desensitization process, they can kind of work their way beyond that to where not every little thing is making them gag because, mm -hmm. you know, things touch the back of your palate 
all the time, right? Yes, yeah. I mean, if you're, you're eating food and obviously something's touching your mouth and you're <laughs> able to swallow, you, you can tolerate it. It's just the, the triggering thought of... I'm gagging. Yeah, this the, is a the, foreign the, object. Yes, this is not I need supposed to. Get rid to... Of this. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that's really reassuring. I hope that that helps those of you who have really struggled with this because I, I understand and empathize completely. Like if every single time you're putting your dentures in and out of your mouth and you're gagging, that's something that you definitely have to work on. And these are some of the things that you can investigate to hopefully move past it. Any other thoughts on, on the gagging well, situation? But one option we should talk about also is that doing a denture, whether it's fixed or a locator over denture, is also an option because if you know this about yourself, that you are a gagger and you don't tolerate something on the roof of your mouth, having a denture that's made in a horseshoe shape so that the palate is open is probably going to be more comfortable and that may be worth the investment of the implants to have a locator over denture that's removable but can be made palateless so that you don't have that area covered on the roof of your mouth may be a worth the investment for your quality of life. Right. So, But you would have to have implants for that and yes. so it'll be a little bit more pricey. You can't get a denture, like a removable denture without the palate, right? That's correct. Okay. All right. Well, that wraps up for today's video. Let me know if you have issues with gagging and if, if you've tried out any of these things and what has worked for you and what is not work for you. Don't forget to check out ASAP Dental Care's information in the description box below. Give them a call, set up your free consultation so you can get your treatment plan started and be on your way to having a beautiful smile. And let's let's have her back to educate us. I'm so thankful for ASAP Dental Care for giving us the opportunity to talk to dental professionals about the topics that we sometimes don't get to talk to while we're in the chair. And all of my social links are in the description box below. Subscribe to my channel, give the video a like, and I will see you guys again next time. Y'all take care.